Hello, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to fill in this flowchart that you have for your assignment this week. We're going to use it for the following subsequent weeks, so it's important that you fill it out correctly and get it right the first time. And if you don't get it right the first time, you'll want to make sure that you go back and correct any mistakes you find, and I will try to grade them quickly so that you can do that. Um, if you've never filled out a flow chart like this before, um, you're going to have to do some research and you're also going to have to use some logic skills like the kind you might use for solving a puzzle or filling in a Sudoku or something like that. Um, the easiest way I find is to open your textbook, open your um, BLM, open your SLM file as well that was in the week one, because there are some charts in the back of that um, SLM file that are going to have some useful information as well. You might also need an internet browser open so that you can search for some things online too. Um, so the next thing is you're going to take your list here of possible unknowns and I recommend just going down the list uh, and picking one. And then the first thing it looks like on this chart and this one is the gram stain. So, okay, I'm going to give you an example bacteria that is not on this list. So let's say I'm going to choose Salmonella enterica. Since gram stain is the first thing I need to know whether I'm going to go for this chart or this chart, then I want to look up in any source I can find whether Salmonella enterica is gram positive or gram negative. Now I've already looked this up and I have found out that it is gram negative. So I would then start my list of gram positive versus gram negative bacteria, and I would put it in this column. And then I would go down the list and I'd say, uh, I wonder if Bacillus megatherium is gram positive or negative, and I would look that up. And I would put it in either this column or this column of the spreadsheet I made. You could do this on pencil and paper too, but it's easier for me to video it if it's on the computer screen. Um, and then the next thing, since we know it's gram negative, is that we're going to go, we're going to be filling it in somewhere on this chart rather than the one on the other page because this one is all the gram negative stuff. So then the next thing you need to know is what morph it is. Is it a rod or a cocci? So I looked it up and Salmonella is a rod. So that's going to go in this column. So you know it's going to go somewhere from here over. It's not going to be this empty box. So then the next thing it asks you if it's a rod is what are the colony characteristics? So you, at this point, you're going to want to see if you can find a picture of that bacteria growing on some solid media to give you an idea of what color it is, since these are color-based um, questions in this row of the flowchart. And since I pulled it up, this is a photo I found of Salmonella enterica. It's not pinkish red. It's not purple. It's not green. It's kind of white. So I would classify that one as translucent, I suppose. So I would go over here, translucent. Okay, so the next thing I need to know is the sim tube. Is it uh, hydrogen sulfide negative or positive? So I would look it up and I had already found that it is positive for hydrogen sulfide. So then the next thing I would need to know is um, if the capsular stain comes back positive or negative. So for salmonella, 
it would come back positive. So that means that it's not the one that's going to go in this box. But we know that it's not the one that's going to go in that box because it's not on this list of possible unknowns. But I just wanted to give you an example of where, how you would figure out where to put something in here. And then once you get one box filled in, you can cross it off of your list over here and then go through and find the next ones. And the reason that we had, I had you sorting them into these columns of gram positive versus gram negative or rod versus cocci is that that will give you a narrowed down list to be working with on either page of this chart. And that will make it a lot simpler for you to tell the difference between maybe only four uh, or, or let's see, four. There's four possible ones that are gram positive rods. There's four possible ones that are gram positive cocci. There is only one possible gram negative cocci. And there is only one, two, three, four, five possible gram negative rods. So that's easier to work with five possibilities or fewer than it would be to work with this full list. If anybody has any further questions on how to go through this, um, I can try to talk you through it during my office hours on Wednesday, or we could meet over Zoom on a uh, different day or time if that time doesn't work for you. But um, it's not as hard as an, and daunting as it looks, but there is one major thing that I want to come across to all of you is that if you're going to use something that is not from one of our course materials, so some internet search, or if you did happen to purchase a microbiology atlas, or you have another textbook in your house from maybe some other course that you're going to use, please do list your sources. Um, you could just send me a second document that's a list of your sources. If they're internet sources, please give me the link to where you found them because the internet is full of misleading information when it comes to microbiology because if you Google image search something, you'll find an image that comes from a page that has the terms you searched, but not necessarily do the terms that you searched apply to that particular part of that particular web page that is showing you the picture of. Um, so I want to make sure that you're not getting misinformation from any of your sources. And if you are, um, I don't want to be holding you accountable for something that was incorrect in your source, as opposed to um, in, the, uh, in your thought process. Most of the information that you would need to get a really good start on this is going to be either in your BLM or the SLM manual. Um, you'll have to flip ahead quite far to find this chart, but there is a chart in there that contains a, a graphical representation of, of things for the second unknown that will happen later in the semester. And it gives you some answers already to how some of these would turn out. But um, if there's anything that you just can't find, you know, you, you're welcome to internet search it, but just be wary that you should always check your sources, make sure they're good, reputable sources. And if you're looking at just an image to answer your question, you're going to want to actually go to that page and read that page and make sure that the image you're looking at is described as the thing you were actually searching for. All right, well, happy hunting, guys.